<laughs> Hi, this is Paul Kreutz, and welcome to Halloween DIY and How To. In this edition, I am going to show you an alternate way to animate these creepy caged creatures. As you can see, these moving, shaking, and now glowing creatures would be a great addition to your Halloween display, especially a spooky witch's den. How is it done? Well, I'm going to show you how, so let's get started. Since this video is basically a companion to the original video, I am going to dive right into the build. So, for more detailed information, please view the original video. The basic difference in this video is that I am using different animators. Instead of the cat toys that automatically shut off after 10 minutes, I am using these battery-operated shaking ghosts. They are actually a new version of the classic original that, believe it or not, were first introduced some 30 years ago. And yes, I did have one back then, I used it a lot, and in fact, I still have it today. There are two models with this new version. A sound-activated model, like the original, and a motion-activated model, or PIR, which stands for Passive Infrared. Just like the original, each time these are activated, they will shake for 10 seconds while emitting an eerie sound and flashing green lights. You can find purchasing and ordering information on these battery-operated devices in the description of this video. Before starting your build, add the appropriate batteries and turn on your device to check that it is working properly. Prep the shaking device by carefully removing the fabric square from the top, but leave the black hanging cord. On the motion-activated device, you will also need to carefully remove the fabric from around the motion sensor. Then, remove any residual glue that may be left around the sensor. Although I like the sound that these make, I do want to lower the volume. This can easily be accomplished by placing a piece of tape or self-adhesive foam or felt over the speaker. Like this. With prep complete, here are three different ways to add legs to this device. There are raised plastic tabs around the bottom perimeter of the device. Loosely place an 11 to 12 inch zip tie in between the raised tabs. Mark the circumference of that perimeter on the zip tie, and then evenly distribute marks along that length for however many legs you want to add. Electrical spade terminals are used next. With two needle nose pliers, pull off the plastic sleeve that is around the terminal. Open the terminal up and place the narrow end of a silicone bait worm into this open area. Use a pliers to clamp it around the worm, like this. Bend the two forks of the terminal down. Then, one by one, hang them at your marks on the zip tie. Using a pliers, crimp them to the zip tie as you go along. In much the same way, you can also use small S-hooks crafted from floral or crafting wire. Hook one end through the silicone bait and crimp the other end at your marks on the zip tie. In either case, place the zip tie back around the base and in between the raised tabs. Tighten the zip tie and cut off the excess. If using fringe, feathers, or other such things, Position them around the bottom perimeter of the device and then use the zip tie to hold them into place. Whichever way you choose, you now have some wiggly legs securely attached to your device. Before covering the motion activated device with fake fur, I am first going to turn the motion detector into a single eye. I'm doing this by using epoxy clay that is formulated to bond to plastic. As a guide for the clay's placement, Draw an eye shape around the domed sensor, using it as the eye's iris and pupil. Wearing gloves, mix the epoxy clay as per instructions. After protecting the sensor with a small piece of painter's tape, work the clay onto the plastic, creating an upper and lower eyelid. The ends of small paintbrushes and a small, flathead screwdriver may prove helpful when sculpting the eyelids. 
When the clay has fully cured, paint it and the area around the domed motion sensor, but do not paint the sensor. While that paint is drying, cut a 12-inch round out of fabric fur. Make sure that the fabric you use is very loose and moves easily. Mark its center and make a small hole at that center mark. Working with the reverse side of the fabric out, thread the hanging cord of the device through the hole. Evenly drape it over the device and then feeling where the clay eye is, mark its location on the back side of the fabric. Remove the fabric and cut out the piece that you have marked. If your fabric has some give to it, cut the hole slightly smaller than your mark. Replace the fabric over the device first side out and threading the hanging cord through the center hole. With the fur temporarily out of the way, apply fabric glue or thick craft glue around the perimeter of the eye. Position the fabrics cut out over the eye and press the fabric firmly onto the glue. When the glue has dried, you can make your final adjustments and add your finishing details. For the sound activated device that doesn't have a motion sensor to worry about, I'm covering it with this rubbery ball. Using the small holes already present, I pull the hanging cord through a top center one. I am also adding craft eyes, so once I decide which two holes to use, I mark them. The shanks on the back of the eyes are pushed through at those marks. Then, working from inside the ball, the locking washers are pushed over the shanks, locking the eyes into position. Cut off the excess shank. Just to add a few more details, I am also using some small rubber horns cut from a silicone hand puppet. They are then pulled through some of the pre-existing holes. You can either leave everything the color it is or change the color by using permanent magic markers and acrylic paints. My creatures will be partially lit with a black light, so I am going to use acrylic black light paints. You can make your final adjustments and add your finishing details. When done, use the hanging cord to hang your creature from inside the animal cage. Make sure that you separate the cord at the top to help control what direction your creature is facing. It's time to let the black light and the battery operated animators work their magic on these fun little creatures. As of the publishing of this video, there are well over 16,000 subscribers to my channel. Because of that, I want to take this opportunity and this time to say thank you to all of my subscribers and viewers for making this happen. And as always, please have a fun, safe, and happy Halloween. Thanks for watching.